Welcome back. We have covered several things for now when it comes to network security. We talked a little about network firewalls, we saw how we can scan network with Nmap and use tools such as Nessus to discover any vulnerabilities. Now, vulnerability analysis and exploitation is once again more advanced topic which you can find in the ZTM ethical hacking course if that's what you're interested in. Besides that, we also saw how we can perform vulnerability analysis onto our router, which is one of the most important devices inside of our network when it comes to security. And essentially, all of these things make our network more safe. We can list out all the topics that we mentioned at some point of the course, which can also refer to network security. Installing firewall, both host-based and network-based, can help secure your network. Now, as we mentioned, network firewalls are most likely to be found in a company network and might not be needed if you're trying to secure just your own home network. Another topic we covered in the endpoint security section that can help in network security is antivirus softwares. Now, it is common sense that if your antivirus software prevents a malware from running on your machine, that it also prevented a threat on the entire network since we don't really know what that malware's purpose is. It might try to search for other vulnerabilities on the network and exploit other devices there and antivirus is a good layer that might be able to stop it. Another important thing which we talked about is updating your firmware, especially on your router, since it is an important thing to do. Sometimes it's done automatically, but in many cases you have to do it manually. Besides this, we talked multiple times throughout the course about default passwords. You must always change the default passwords. Whether they being the passwords for a login page, or for your router access, or perhaps a password for accessing services such as FTP, SSH and others, you always should change default password and we saw the reason why when we covered the router vulnerability analysis. With just a little bit of googling for my specific router, once we googled, we managed to find the default passwords for certain services. Okay, another big topic we mentioned are performing vulnerability analysis and penetration testing onto your own network or onto your company network. There is no better way to discover vulnerabilities than to purposely try and find them. And that's where penetration testing and tools like Nmap, Nessus, MSF Console and others come in play. Another thing that we mentioned at the beginning of the course when we talked about assets is to always back up your data. Now, it's not possible to 100% secure everything and there will probably be a time when you will have a breach but in these cases, it is important that you have all your data backed up in case it gets destroyed by, let's say, a malware or a ransomware or any type of threat at all. And last but not least is to always train the employees, whether them being employees of the company you work for or of your own company, they should always have basic security education if they are interacting with important components of your network and of your business. But besides these, there are a few more things that you can do. For example, when it comes to your router, it is not just important to change its password and to update its firmware. It's also important that you have a good router. What do I mean by that? Well, many home networks have old routers that barely even update anymore and that could have a bunch of vulnerabilities just because they are old and there are certain things that cannot be updated. If you have an old router, it might be a good time to get a new one and a better one. Also, manufacturers build and distribute these network devices such as routers with exploitable softwares just so they can have ease of installation, operation and maintenance. These common types of routers are also main target of the attackers since they are widely distributed so it might not be a bad idea to get a device from some less known vendor considering that it's well made and secured. 
Another thing is that many services inside the network come with default passwords, but they also come with default settings. Many of these softwares don't have their settings configured to the most secure ones, and that is probably for easier use. This can present a threat if some important security measure is off, so it's always important when installing a new software inside the network to check its security settings just to see if they can be set to more secure options. Another thing that you want to do, usually in company networks, is network segmentation. This, if set properly, can prevent an intruder from executing exploits and laterally moving around the network. If it's poorly set, the attacker could extend their impact and gain control of multiple devices and not just one. Now, there are multiple types of segmentations of network, but first and most obvious one is physical separation of devices. You don't want your important devices with all of your important data set in a room where many people can access it and where many people can connect to the same network where that device is. And even if they are connected to the same network, you want to give least privileges to devices that you do not trust so they don't have much access to the network. Another form of separation is using VLANs to isolate users from the rest of the domains. This virtual type of separation is logically separating different devices on the same physical network. Now next thing to keep an eye on is something we already mentioned, which is setting privileges inside the network. This refers mostly again to company networks where you want to have network administrator and you don't want regular users trying to execute unauthorized commands or anything that is not in their privilege level. If they do try, however, with well-set privilege settings, the commands should be rejected. This of course makes administrator credentials more valuable, so all the accounts should have multi-factor authentication, so it makes it harder for intruders to gain access to administrator privileges, or administrator credentials in this case, and start performing malicious things on the network. The company network can have a special server that provides authentication, authorization and accounting services to store access information for network device management. The passwords of accounts that are being stored in databases should be all hashed and salted and also it is a good idea to have them in a backup in a protected offline device. Another measure to take into consideration is to always verify integrity of hardware and software that is being implemented inside the network. Bigger companies do this usually by maintaining strict control of supply chain and purchases only from authorized resellers. And upon installation, inspecting all the devices for any sign of tampering. Usually, if you download a software, you also want to perform hash verification to see if that software itself has been modified during the download. Another thing that many companies do, and that refers back to our endpoint security section, is to harden the network devices. You pretty much want to go through all the security checks that we did in the endpoint security section to ensure that your devices have even more security. Now bigger companies go over the head with this, but for a reason, and they end up installing a bunch of antivirus softwares, heavy firewalls, and hard disk encryptions, which end up making the device slower, but it's better to have a slower device than to have it compromised. For home networks, this type of security is not needed, however, you can always have light multiple security layers, just as we showed in the endpoint section, to increase your security overall. And last but not least, you also want to keep an eye on physical security. Remember what we talked about before. All these security measures, firewalls, antivirus softwares, penetration testing and vulnerability analysis is useless if someone can just walk in and steal your device and all of your data, right? This is why it's important to also have physical security protecting your important assets. Nonetheless, these would be the basic steps to having a secure network architecture. Now, most of these topics we already researched, the ones that we didn't, you want to research even more. And if you end up implementing the things we mentioned in this lecture, you will 100% have more secure network. 
Does this mean that it will be unbreachable? No, since remember that 100% security is not possible, but we can always end up scaling up and making it more and more secure. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next lecture.